You know a lot about golf. Well, we're waiting. We are they, those weekend golf guys. I am John Ashton. He is Jeff Smith. Not only the number one golf instructor in the state of Indiana, according to Golf Digest magazine, but also the teacher of the year in the state of Indiana, according to his peers and students, I would imagine. Congratulations again, my man. There you are. Thank you. Thank Top you very much. List. You know, I, I will say this. Um, I really haven't said much about that on the air, but the truth is, is that these are, uh, are th- these titles and things, they're they mean a lot because they are from my peers. Right. If they were just from people who um, didn't really know and were just my students, that would mean even more. But I think that my students are certainly biased. But my peers yeah. also are aware of others in my in my region, in my state, mm-hmm. who also do what I do. And um, they, they have given me a very nice honor. And, and some um, of those peers, I mean, to be honest, Jeff, some of those peers are also do what you do. Yeah, you know? that's true. So, so and, they're basically saying, hey, he's better than am I at this point in time. And that is always nice. However, yeah, it, it is a very nice honor. Getting those honors did not put him in a perpetually good mood, as you might no. think. No, because we've just been talking and we've been talking about some of the stupidity of this game. <laughs> and... <laughs> And by extension, the people who manage this game. We're ticked off about a whole bunch of things. A whole bunch of, we just started railing on each other about, well, this is stupid and this ticks me off and whatever. And we said, well, why don't we talk about that on the show? So we're going to do that, but we're going to take a little bit to get into a little bit better mood because we'd like to talk about the stupidity with a smile on our face, not anger in our heart. <laughs> okay. I, so. You know, <laughs> I'm going to try to do it with a smile on my face. Mm-hmm. I'll see how it comes out. We'll see how it Stay works. Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. We'll find out. It may or may not be effective. But you got to admit, there's just some stuff to this game that you go, really? Who who came up with that stupid idea? And then there's other stuff that you, you just can't understand. And I'm sure there are rules, Jeff, that you feel stupid having to enforce when you're out there. In those There's tournaments. truth in that. When There's you go up and say, that. listen, guys, I'm really sorry, but the rule says X, Y, and Z. We're going to delve into all of that when we come right back. And again, with smiles on our faces, you too. We are those weekend golf guys. Be right back. You want to see how great a golf instructor Jeff Smith really is? It's very easy. $5golfclub.com. The number $5golfclub.com. Sure sign of spring for me is when I hear him say that the pitchers and catchers are reporting for spring training. I love spring training. Have you ever thought about going out to Arizona, catch the Cactus League spring training? There's 10 stadiums, 15 Major League Baseball teams, and 75 degree average temperatures that time of year. Uh, 10 stadiums are, are all in the greater Phoenix area, all within 50 miles. And baseball is a lot of fun. Spring training is a lot of fun. But you know what else is a lot of fun is Arizona. Arizona, known for incredible landscapes, outdoor adventures, and hey, bring your golf clubs. Because when the guys aren't playing baseball, you can be playing golf. There's so much great golf in Arizona around the greater Phoenix area. So check it out. Spring training in Arizona. What a great idea. You can plan your spring training getaway at visitarizona.com slash spring training. That's visitarizona.com slash spring training. That's visitarizona.com slash spring training. You know, golfers, we love gear. It's a big part of our game, and we put a lot of time and, and let's face it, a lot of money into getting it right, whether we're researching our next irons or maybe even testing out some new tees. But there is one important piece of equipment that we overlook, your golf cart battery. Most of us don't consider the quality of our battery. That That is until it dies, and we're stranded out in the middle of the course. That's why we want you to know about the Rely On Insight battery, the intelligent golf cart battery that utilizes intuitive software for better performance and fewer disconnects. The Rely On Insight battery is powered by lithium, not lead acid, so it charges faster, provides more range, and requires no maintenance. It's a drop-in replacement, so just connect and go. You can learn more at relyonbattery.com slash golfguys and use our special promo code golfguys for 10% off. Plus, you'll get a free charger when you order two or more Insight batteries. Again, that's relyonbattery.com slash golfguys and use promo code golfguys. And no other lithium battery compares to Relyon's. Order yours today. (laughs) 
Of course, we have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash golfguys. We would love it if you were to go there and like us. We'd love it even more if you'd go there and follow us, facebook.com slash golfguys. Okay, we are back. Those weekend golf guys, John Ashton here, Jeff Smith, the Golf Cave. At, uh, where are you I'm at, at Timbergate today? today? Timbergate yes, sir. today in Edinburgh, Indiana. Like I said, we, we have just been talking about some of the stupidity within this game and the people who, who conduct and uh, enforce that stupidity. One of the things that has gotten Jeff a little bit miffed is some of the changes they've made recently to the handicap system. I do like the fact that they're trying to get the whole world on board mm-hmm. in playing the same thing. Okay. We do know a few things, right? So if we try to do things that are, say, across the board worldwide, we have to acknowledge what one of the things that my friend Neil Hampton said. Neil Hampton is the general manager at Royal Dornock Golf Club mm, in Scotland. In in Dornock, Scotland. Yep. Is the fact that they don't play much stroke play golf there. It's, they do they, match they play, play most a lot of, the time, of match right? play golf. And so when they finally get around to having what they call medal play days, mm-hmm. those are effectively tournaments for them. They'll they'll have a skewed handicap due to the fact that they play an awful lot of golf that does not get counted, Mm -hmm. which means they're better in their skills than what they will record for the metal play handicap. Almost as if they were sandbagging. But they're not. No, but it comes across the 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 same way. But the system will will somewhat effectively produce that Mm -hmm. because, um, as you know, I've been a part of a team of Americans that have gone over there and, and played against the, I was captain of a, of a team of kids mm-hmm. who went over there and competed. And the biggest thing that I noticed was that their handicapping system was different in the way that not, it wasn't the calculations of it. It was the fact that we count every score and that is more reflective of what's about to happen than the, what they do. Because what they do is they play an awful lot of match play where putts are given and strokes are taken and, and this, that, and the other thing where you're not really going about it in a stroke play fashion because even the, the strategy of the game is different. And they're not going to change their method of play. They're going to continue to play match play, which means that they're going to play the golf course differently than if they were trying to have the lowest score throughout 18 holes because maybe their their opponent is in deep trouble and they try to play take one a safe shot. Or if they're forced into it from a strategic decision – to play a more risky shot. And that style of play will not be conducive to, in, in addition to the fact they don't, they don't put everything out all the time, mm-hmm. it won't be conducive to producing a handicap that is truly comparable to the, the USGA handicap. So when they tr- try to combine this thing in the world, they, they have to find a way to, to combat that because it will always be different. Mm. And, and that's what my friend Neil Hampton general manager at Royal Dornock has said very clearly that even though this is a world handicap system, it will still be skewed yeah. differently. And right? even though they've changed it, it used to be what uh, the best eight out of the last 10. Now it's the best eight out of the last 20 or vice versa. There, there are differences there and the calculations are the calculations. And I'm never going to argue with the mathematicians on this. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. Because they, they understand what they're doing. And they understand that this way is better than the other way. But there is something that is going on here that I do not agree with the thought of at all because it, it is um, insulting to everyone. Can I guess what it is? You can. Rounds that you play alone don't count. Yeah. 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 Now, on the surface, people go, yeah, okay, I, I get that. There's got to be somebody there to verify your score. How about the fact that people are going to put it into the handicap system anyway? Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Unless it was was really good or really bad. (laughs) Right. So what's going to happen here? What is the USGA really saying to people right now? They don't trust them. Right. Yeah. John, I'm the USGA, and if you go out and play by yourself, that score that you're about to post, I don't believe you. Mm Mm-hmm. John, <laughs> you are a liar. a liar, liar, and a cheat, and it's on fire. That's what the USGA in the World Handicap System mm-hmm. is saying right. to people, yep. and I really have a hard time with that. In a game that is based on honor, 
First and off, integrity. Which, which makes it even worse. Now, you know. here we go. This is the same governing body around the world. Let's combine them because they're doing that in the handicap thing. So the RNA and USGA. The same governing body that talks about the game as a game of honor. And yet, in this instance, calls you, John, a liar and a cheat. You know, they don't even Your know. pants are on fire. They dude. don't even know me that well, man. <laughs> they don't. But maybe they listened to the show and decided that that would be the case. But that's the same thing. They, they, they talk about the rules and the fact that we must police ourselves in all of the rules that they set out. Mm-hmm. They come up with rules for the game that are rules to play, and they are all based upon the fact that you will be honorable mm-hmm. and you will uphold the rules of golf as best you know them with honesty. And, and, and now – they are saying to you, you, John, your pants are on fire. That's it. We you trust you, but not that much. son of a gun. Yeah. Uh-huh. You can't be honest enough to post that score. And I, uh, I understand. I get it. They are trying to stop the people who will go out and post around by themselves when nobody else is watching that's higher than their usual to bump their handicap up so they can go win money in the net tournament on the member member next weekend. I understand. Yeah, but they're going to do it anyway. I know they're going to do it anyway. Whether you have that's a what rule makes about me it. mad is the USGA knows that. Yeah. They know that that still is going to happen, whether they're by themselves or whether they're three other buddies that are just like them. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, that group's going to play terrible yeah. and they're going to get their handicaps up because they've got their own member members to win. And the USGA knows these things. They are not uninformed. No. But they still made a decision to say to all of the golfers out there, we don't trust you. You, you sandbagging lie- so-and-so. That's right. Yeah. You lion cheating, miserable, wet dog. <laughs> right? I hate that. It makes me irritated because it's the same governing body that is always trying to say we are upholding the standards of the game and our own conduct. As a matter of fact, here's an interesting one. I'm looking at the USGA's Rules of Golf website. Mm -hmm. And under the heading of Standards of Player Conduct, it even says they're expected to play in the spirit of the game by acting with integrity, by following the rules and applying penalties and being honest in all aspects of play. And here we are. <laughs> unless okay. you're alone. Because yeah, we know you're nobody. you're by yourself. Because yeah. if you're by yourself, you have no integrity. That's right. That's right. It only happens when people are there to watch you. Yes. That's right. Oh, man. That's, that's it. So I, I really have a hard time because they are – look, the, the, the USGA handicap system does not apply to me because – I'm a PGA professional Mm -hmm. and I don't get any strokes when I go out and compete. I'm always playing at scratch period because Mm -hmm. I have a PGA professional badge and whether or not I play to a scratch or I play to a 10, I still get no strokes. So these rules (laughs) of handicap do not even apply to me. And yet I'm still offended. Yeah. I'm insulted. I shouldn't say offended because it doesn't really offend me. I'm insulted because they are insulting the intelligence or the integrity of all golfers. All at this golfers. Point. Yeah. Yeah. They're lumping everybody in there and, and just uh, casting aspersions upon their ability to tell the truth when they are alone. And they say that the, uh, the true, the, the true showing of your character is how you act when you are alone, not John, just when people are watching. Yes. I've got my blue blazer on and (laughs) I say that you, sir, are not to be trusted. Yeah. Well, you know, there's something, there's something to be said for that, man. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know who you've been talking to, but uh, they may not be all that wrong. (laughs) So our tentacles are everywhere, sir. Oh, I understand that. Listen, there's a bunch of uh, stuff that, that kind of, kicks us off about golf and golfers anyhow we're going to delve into some of that when we come right back um whether or not you can be trusted we are trusting you to come back with us we'll be right back we are unless we take off guys it's hard to really contemplate the fact that baseball season starts in about six weeks at least spring training does 
And if you are a baseball fan, then one of the things on a bucket list of every baseball fan is to go to spring training. And the Cactus League spring training in Arizona is fantastic. There are 15 uh, major league teams there, 10 stadiums. Average temperature is 75 degrees. And all of the 10 stadiums are within 50 miles of the greater Phoenix area. Uh, and, and this is cool, too, because when you get there, it's much more laid back, much more low key. You can meet the players. You can get autographs before the games. And then, of course, make sure you bring your sticks because most baseball fans are also great golfers. And you know how fantastic the golf can be in the greater Phoenix area. It's, it's just incredible. Even as incredible as the landscapes, the outdoor adventures, the urban centers, the ghost towns, the artsy communities. Uh, it's just great. Check it out. Arizona is a perfect home base for baseball fans. I want to talk to you about my wife. She is a critical care nurse, works four 12-hour shifts a week at the hospital. Her knees hurt. And she's tried the Icy Hots and the Bengays of the world only to say, yeah, I got 20 minutes of relief. That pain is right back again. So I got this bottle of stuff in the mail. This is Omax Health. It's called CryoFreeze CBD. They developed it at Omax Health. It's a non-prescription, triple-action pain relief roll-on, specially formulated to block pain receptors, reduce inflammation, and improve muscle and joint flexibility. All right, so she rolled it on and went to work, came back in the morning, and you know what she said to me? It works! Omax Health is offering our listeners 20% off a full bottle of Crypto Freeze Pain Relief Roll-On, plus free shipping. Now, the discount also applies to anything, any product, site-wide on their website. Just go to omaxhealth.com today. Enter the code WEEKEND and take advantage of this incredible savings. That is omaxhealth.com and enter the code WEEKEND. You'll get 20% off Cryo Freeze and anything else site-wide. omaxhealth.com. If you do a lot of work online, especially if you do it from a, a public place like a coffee shop, a Starbucks or something, you really need a VPN, a virtual private network. ExpressVPN is the fastest virtual private network I've tried, and I've tried a bunch of them. And I know how you can get it for less than 7 bucks a month, and that comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. But there's an extra special spiff. Using ExpressVPN, you can spoof your location so you can buy the International Game Pass for just 125 bucks and stream all of the NFL games left in the season. All of them. Protect your online activity today and find out how you can get three months free at expressvpn.com slash weekend. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V as in virtual, P as in private, N as in network.com. E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash weekend for three months free with a one-year package. Visit expressvpn.com slash weekend to learn more. It's us, those weekend golf guys. I'm John Ashton. He is Jeff Smith. Once again, just want to uh, congratulate my man Jeff over here. Not only the number one golf instructor in the state of Indiana, according to Golf Digest magazine, but recently named by his peers as Teacher of the Year in the state of Indiana. You're just trying to calm me down after the last segment. You're getting all riled up about the USGA. That's all you're trying to do. Let's, let's you're get afraid all... of what I might say, aren't you? Yes, I am, because you never you know. Think you're you... going to have to bleep me out. <laughs> the USGA may be listening. They, they monitor us now and again just to make sure we're not being really, really mean to them because they have no sense of humor. We tried to make a joke to them once, and they just kind of looked at us and poo-pooed. I, I think their khakis are too tight. <laughs> that could be. That could be. But there's some things on a golf course that really ticks me off. And you know what the number one is? The number one no, is, and this goes to but golf you're about course, to tell us, I, I hope. certainly am, man. Well, you've sit built it up that way. Sit the down for this one. one. thing, right? Okay. One of the things that is absolutely necessary to maintain a golf course in perfect condition is aeration, right? Yes. You got to punch holes in that sucker, what, two times a year? In many parts of the country, that is the good practice to yeah. do. And it's necessary to make sure that the putting surfaces are healthy and they have a good root structure. And you're not going to get one of those things where a green just dies on you from one round to the next. Right. However, putting on a air recently aerated green is next to impossible. You agree? I mean, to, to, mm, to putt accurately. It's, it's, yeah, to putt accurately. Yeah. You know. Look, you, things are going to happen, right? Yeah, you get those little holes all over the place, and then all right. So those... this is where you get to rant, and I get to defend. Okay, a little. Why and I'm you, not going to defend completely. Why you charge me full price? <laughs> because the golf course is not up to par, and you okay. know it. I want to take this argument 
that you just made, that sentence right there, and apply it to other things that are on the golf course of condition as well. Mm -hmm. You just booked a tee time at full price, $40. Mm -hmm. Let's say it's $40. Let's just pull that number out of the air because you know what that is? That's the average price of golf and public golf in the country, $40. Okay. So you just plunked it down, and it pours down rain before you hit the first tee. Mm -hmm. It is a stinking gully washer. Mm -hmm. And you're inside hanging out dry because you don't want to go out there and play and get wet. And you're waiting it out, waiting it out, waiting it out. Mm -hmm. How's the condition of the golf course when you get there? Wet. Flooded. Yeah. The bunkers are wet. They're washed out. You know it before you even set foot on the golf course. Mm -hmm. And yet you paid your $40 and you're going to go play, but you don't go to the pro shop and pound your fist on the counter and say, the golf course is not in 100% condition and you guys know that and you still charged me forty dollars tell me john Mm -hmm. what's the difference is it because it's man-made or is it because it's mother nature that's not it at all the difference is that i have the option at most golf courses when that happens to go to the pro shop not bang my fist but very nicely smile and say sir listen this is ridiculous could i please get a rain check yeah they offer rain checks Mm -hmm. if you ask for them Mm -hmm. they don't but if you go play they but if you go play then that's it's on you Okay. So, because, but you have a choice to go play or not to go play. As well as you do when it is airified. Not, but you're not going to get your money back. They're going to say, well, we airified. The, if they tell me beforehand, I say, okay, listen, yeah, that's great. I'm not going to play. Thank you. And walk away. Um, but mm-hmm. they normally don't tell you that. Sometimes you don't know it until you get to the green. And so you know, let me ask you a question, John. What is this? How many years have you been playing golf, John? You know, it's a, about 107, it feels like. Right. So somewhere short of an eon and a millennium, right? But yeah. you have – and what do you know, John? Twice a year, what do you know is going to happen? You know it's going to happen sometime Yeah, they're going to aerate degrees. Tell me about it up front, man. Tell right. me about it when I call and make a tea time. Mm-hmm. And tell me something. Yeah. Couldn't you ask the question, hey, when do you guys airify? I, I you could. You guys airified now. When did you airify? Mm-hmm. Right? Before you make your tea time, you can ask that question as well. How about – can the question be asked the same thing? How about this one? It's a gully washer. Uh-huh. And you know that it happened yesterday, right? Right. Poured down rain. It was insane. The bunkers are washed out. The guys, guys know it, mm-hmm. right? Sunshine today. Mm-hmm. You call the pro shop, get yourself a tea time today. Mm-hmm. And the golf course is bunkers are washed out, still puddles in them. Mm-hmm. The rivers and the fairways are gone, but carts are on the path. Because yeah. it's still so stinking wet. Yeah, I hate that. All right. But you called, got yourself a tea time, mm-hmm. and they gave you the rate, and you came and played. Yeah. And your attitude about that one is different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It rained a lot. We got to keep it on the path, and the bunkers are washed out. Ah, it's okay. It's okay. You right? hit it in the, the bunker, pull squishy. it out, and hit it. Okay, right? Yeah. No problem. Okay. Not but a problem. the point is, is that even that instance right there – you called after the fact. They didn't really tell you, hey, John, guess what? It rained three inches yesterday afternoon <laughs> at 4 p.m. And it's 9 o'clock tomorrow, today. And the greens the greens are soggy wet. Uh-huh. Uh, the cups are half filled with water. Uh-huh. And all the greenside bunkers are all washed out. Nobody is giving that kind of golf course condition update every single day at the public golf courses around the country. You no, know they're why? not. But if I if I live close enough to a public golf course to call and get a tee time, I probably am aware that it rained and I'm probably mm-hmm. aware of what the conditions are going to be. And I'm just never aware that they've aerated unless they tell me. What? Your memory is not that good? No. You played golf you've t- you've played I golf, played golf forever. I, I played golf at seven or eight different golf courses around my hometown. I can't tell you what their aeration schedule is. But you know that they're going to airify this time of year and you're not wise enough to, to ask? call them and ask that question when you call and book the tea time? No. Really? You know what else pisses me off? <laughs> me pointing out the fact that you could do that? <laughs> golf pros who argue with me. <laughs> <laughs> No, we're moving on. I mean, I understand where you're coming from, but you're coming from arguing with you. You're coming from the golf course's point of view, and I don't care. I'm coming from the consumer point of view, and it's all about me. Okay, so there you go. So, as my mother, <laughs> there used, you have it, folks. As, all over the country, John as, is only interested in John. As my mother used to say, "That's it," and I don't want to hear another word about it. Okay, <laughs> which which is the 
<laughs> I lost my argument. I'm frustrated. <laughs> That's right, and I'm walking Leave away. Me alone. <laughs> and this is the other thing. And if you want to justify this, go right ahead. But you know those uh, poker chip souvenir little thingies that most oh, golf yeah. courses have these days? Yeah, right. Something to sell. Mm-hmm. Everybody takes it and uses it as a ball marker. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, it's a little bit big, people. A little bit big. You know, you don't have to be directly in my line to have your ball marker directly in my line if you use one something that big. <laughs> it's bigger you know? than a golf ball, I <laughs> yes, think. Right. Some of them might be. You know, and when you have to move it, you have to move it two putter heads, not just one. You know, I got one, John, that is essentially twice as large in diameter. Mm-hmm. It's like a mini frisbee, and you know, I break that. It's in my golf bag the whole time. And I break that out when I know that I got a guy who's been out of shape about a lot of things. <laughs> and then, yeah, that's because you like my ball's near his line. Needle, needle, I'm putting that one out there because yeah. I want to have my little fun. <laughs> that's right. The rule of thumb, the polite thing is like a, anything the size of a quarter or smaller. I used to use a dime, but then I realized that if it was not a sunny day and a new dime, I couldn't remember where or see it on the green. Yeah, I've done that with pennies. <laughs> yeah. And I, Look, I'm not going to say that my eyes aren't what they used to be. <laughs> believe me, a, an oxidized copper penny that's kind of brownish on a green green, mm-hmm. it's tough, man. It is. It's tough. Yeah. So I use silver stuff. Bright and I use silver bigger stuff. In a, in a, in a nice yeah. sunny day, you can usually find it. Mm-hmm. But that's, that's tough. But those, those big little ball things, markers, man. you know, they have the little nubs yeah. that golf courses have with their logos on them. Uh huh. Stick them in the green. Yeah. You know, I like those and I hate those all at the same time. Why? I hate them in my pocket. I like them on the green. Okay. <laughs> right? I'm always reaching in. I'm stabbing myself with the – it's a stupid little plastic nub. It's like a, a sixteenth of an inch thick right, or deep. But mm-hmm. I'm still stabbing myself yeah. in the leg. I sit down yeah. in the golf cart, you know, <laughs> yeah. and all of a sudden, bam, I'm sticking myself. I'm like, yeah. I have. But yet they, they don't go anywhere when you put them on the green. And I like them because they're, you know, they're white and they're plastic. And, and you, can you just boom, them. pop them in the yeah. ground and they don't move around. I have one of those um, pitch fix, like a switchblade type thing. You can hear it right here. Mm-hmm. Okay. You, you push it in, the repair tool comes popping out. Yeah. Well, you know, that button is like a hair trigger. <laughs> and I have had it pop out while it's in my pocket. That yeah. hurts. <laughs> You know, that, that right there is a very clear description of why I don't carry a, a, a fold-up pocket knife anymore. Mm. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I stabbed myself in the leg uh, one time doing that, and that was the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> it only takes once. That's the one good Just thing one. about this. Just it takes one. once, yeah, and you start one. finding yeah. other places to put it. I tried. I thought maybe the back pocket would be better. <laughs> that was a big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> But do me a there favor, you go, guys. Right? If, you're, if you're using one of those big things to mark your ball, don't. Okay? Just don't. And if if you own a golf course and you've aerated, tell me that when I get there or when I call to make a tee time. Okay? One of the best things about that is that you'll find that to be the case at the ones that are managed very well mm-hmm. and the ones that, that really respect their customer base. Mm-hmm. Is they do things like that. Yeah. Private clubs, like the one you now belong to, John, because mm. you're now an official country club member. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, you're going to hear about this from me all year long, let's I hope, guarantee you. Let's hope my wife's not listening today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Having- After all the years that you have spent railing <laughs> against the hoity-toity, snooty country club members, you now have joined one. <laughs> In the words of Groucho Marx, I'd never join a club that would have me as a member. So I just want to know what alias you use. That's what I really need to know. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, uh, they will also post their verification schedules to the members. Yeah. Yep. Good ones do that. Yeah, they do. They do. Because you know why? They don't want to listen to your complaining <laughs> of your lack of questions about the conditions of the golf course. You know, they could join a long list of people who don't like to listen to my complaining. Uh, <laughs> wow. I didn't know there were that many of us out there. Yeah, there are. Uh, and, and complaining I'm going to do about some of the stupid rules that are still hanging on in this game. And we're going to do that. In fact, I think Jeff might even join me rather than argue with me this time. We're going to do that when we come right back. We are those weekend golf guys. Hang out with us.
You know, golfers, we love gear. It's a big part of our game, and we put a lot of time and, and let's face it, a lot of money into getting it right, whether we're researching our next irons or maybe even testing out some new tees. But there is one important piece of equipment that we overlook, your golf cart battery. Most of us don't consider the quality of our battery. That That is until it dies, and we're stranded out in the middle of the course. That's why we want you to know about the Relyon Insight battery, the intelligent golf cart battery that utilizes intuitive software for better performance and fewer disconnects. The Relyon Insight battery is powered by lithium, not lead acid, so it charges faster, provides more range, and requires no maintenance. It's a drop-in replacement, so just connect and go. You can learn more at RelyonBattery.com slash GolfGuys and use our special promo code GolfGuys for 10% off. Plus, you'll get a free charger when you order two or more Insight batteries. Again, that's RelyonBattery.com slash GolfGuys and use promo code GolfGuys. And no other lithium battery compares to Relyon's. Order yours today. I am not bragging when I tell you my iron play has improved substantially because I'm going to give total credit to Jeff Smith and the Smart Ball Golf Low Point Swing Trainer. That thing's awesome. When you hit the ball the right way at the right time, you get the right result. Great feedback with the trainer, too. I'm telling you, I use this Smart Ball Golf Low Point Swing Trainer with so many people now. It gives them the visual and the feedback of what they need to do and where their club needs to land it amazes me at how quickly people get better with their iron play because once you get that feedback you get the feel and you don't need that feedback directly once you have the feel to do it right on the course and what happens is you're going to get more greens closer to the pin lower scores and when you do it right you don't need forgiving clubs no you can hit blades smart ball golf low point swing trainer smartballgolf.com go now smartballgolf.com soon it's going to be february which means soon and thereafter it'll be springtime and and baseball season will start up again but you know what happens between february and the start of baseball season is spring training which is a really cool time to go see your favorite baseball team why don't you follow them out to the cactus league spring training in arizona this year it's a perfect home for baseball fans out there, man. It is great. Ten stadiums in the greater Phoenix area, all within 50 miles of each other. Uh, Fifteen major league teams do their spring training out in the Arizona area. And the temperature in Arizona, it averages about 75 degrees in February, which is not only great weather for watching baseball, but it's great weather for playing golf. Bring your sticks and bring the family because Arizona is a fantastic destination for families. you got family resorts. There's fun for kids of all ages, and if your child has not seen the Grand Canyon, then you're just not being a good parent. Lots of great spring training baseball and lots of great golf. Arizona, head out there this February. If you're in sales, you know that people buy things from people they know, they like, and they trust. It can take forever to build that kind of a relationship unless you use golf. Business golf is the quickest way to build trust with your clients and potential customers. TheBusinessGolfCourse.com. Go there now and check it out. I'm John Ashton. He is Jeff Smith, collectively known as those weekend golf guys. And I got to tell you, man, they, they uh, made some um, some changes to the rules effective the beginning of last year. Yeah, there were a lot of things they did that I thought were pretty good. Yeah, they did some very constructive things. They fixed some of the rules that we thought were stupid, like uh, hitting the flag stick. If you hit the flag stick, it was a stroke penalty. Now you can keep the flag stick in and you can hit it all you want to. You can use it as a backstop if you want to. You mean while you're putting? While you're putting, yeah. Well, you know, it was always like that when you weren't putting off the green. Yeah, and it's also now that if you address your ball on the green. Hello, ball. And it moves without you doing anything? You no longer have to claim a stroke for that. The Dustin Johnson rule. Mm -hmm. But now there are still some very silly rules. I couldn't understand how this thing went on. Um, Abnormal ground conditions. You know, play it as it lies. That's what everybody tells you, right? Yep. One of the exceptions to that, as I was reading deeper into the rule book, is uh, abnormal ground conditions. These include, and I quote, ground under repair, but they don't include little sand-filled or replaced divots, and we'll talk about that later. Mm-hmm. Um, but they talk about, like, man-made obstructions, or another exception as it goes on here in another paragraph is burrowing animal holes, okay? Moles. Uh, moles 
or rabbits, or mm-hmm. groundhogs, or gophers, or salamanders. Or snakes. Yeah, snakes. But yeah. it excludes holes made by a non-burrowing animal, such as a dog. Okay, so now I also have to be an expert in animal husbandry to play golf? I have to be <laughs> able to look at a hole and tell you what animal made it? <laughs> so here's the thought, right? Okay. Let's say the golf course has not sprayed for grubs. Uh huh. And all of a sudden, they got skunks on the golf course rooting and ripping up fairways, digging holes. Mm hmm. That's not a burrowing animal. I know, but after Is the it? fact, if you don't see the skunk to it, how do you know a skunk did it? That's right. <laughs> so here's the thought. If I am running the golf course, mm-hmm. I'm just going to have something on my scorecard that says something about the ground under repair caused by animal damage. Mm-hmm. And I'll call it ground under repair, and then we're done. Or, you know what I do? I say, I'm not playing out of that. <laughs> and move it. <laughs> That's what you're doing. you got a problem with that? Take it up with Jeff. <laughs> there are two <laughs> solutions here, right? Your solution is, I'm just moving my ball. That's Nobody right. Saw it. That's Let's right. Go. It's confusing, <laughs> and uh, heck with it. On that whole ground under repair thing, I know this is your main pet peeve in life, man. It is. Is those those divots in the fairway. Okay. Now, earlier in the show, I said that I was going to try to have a smile on my face when I went through this. Mm -hmm. So here's my best attempt. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Try to picture me smiling (laughs) when I say this. Those pearly whites are gleaming, folks. So let me get this straight, USGA. You just changed the rules in the hazard. You know that place way off to the side where you don't want to play from because it's a lousy place to play from, and that's what happens when you hit bad shots? Mm -hmm. You just made it so somebody can effectively get a club on the ball by able to move stuff inside of one of those hazards. Loose impediments. They now call them penalty areas. Yes, Yes. hell yeah. Now, people get to move their stuff out of the way, get a clean shot at their ball, so it's not such a penalty. It's not so hazardous. It's not such a pain to have to play it as it lies. <clears throat> I'm going to try to smile again. Okay. <laughs> because they don't make you play it as it lies. They just made it so you don't have to play it as it lies. You get to move stuff. You get to make it better. Unless, of course, you've just done what I do and hit it down the middle of the fairway. <laughs> and the good players do this. They hit it down the middle of the fairway. The and then fairway. they have to play it out of a divot that someone else made. Yeah. Also a good player because they were in the middle of the fairway, or may and or may not have filled in with uh, with the with the they sand fill and it in or not, mixture. Yeah, they just made a rule that helped a player who does not have the same skill, effectively, who did not work as hard at the game to be good at it. I'm mm-hmm. still trying to smile. Yes, I know. They just made a rule that said the player that didn't work as hard, they don't have to play it as it lies. But the guy who did work hard and hits it in the fairway, he's put a plane as it lies. <laughs> there. There. How's yeah. that? Or again, okay. you can just use the foot wedge and move it. I mean, it's a stupid rule. I think stupid rules by definition should be ignored. Period. If I were not a former rules official in college golf tournaments and high school golf tournaments. Yeah. And if I were not a golf professional that is in favor of upholding rules and playing with integrity by those rules, I would agree with you and take it out of the divot every stinking time. Yeah. I can't begin to tell you how many times I've been in a fairway divot to one degree or another of disrepair, Mm -hmm. whether it been the guy who just took six inches worth of sod out right in front of me in the group in front and didn't do anything about it. Yeah. Somebody who did it two weeks ago and filled it in nicely with sand and it's beginning to grow back. One way or another, I just got penalized because I still had to play mine as it lies and somebody else now doesn't. That's right. So the, Okay. Yeah. There, you, you feel better now? Uh, marginally. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that is that is a rule that needs to be Look, changed. I got a little bit of it off my chest, but the thing is, is it still exists. And it, and it still ticks you off every time it happens. Because they had a chance. And because you hit the ball down the middle of the fairway so often, it happens to you more often than other people. We understand. It does. That. Yes. Serve you right to suffer, buddy. Serve you right. Yeah, yeah. I'm still going to take your money. <laughs> 
you know that time we played uh, we played golf together and we had I'm a still a, trying to forget and we had a blind <laughs> shot on a on a course you had been to before and I hadn't and you said there's a creek right over that ridge you might want to lay up yeah you know you broke a rule when you did that yeah and I didn't care I was trying to so- solve the, <laughs> the, the, the suffering and whining and gnashing of teeth <laughs> that was about to happen because <laughs> the the phrase there's a creek over that ridge is is cool that's right. I gave you general information mm-hmm. that was course knowledge. Right. But when I said you might want to lay up, I know I broke a rule. Yep. Yeah, because you can't give advice or ask for advice. Nope. I can't look at my – well, if it's, it's my playing the, partner, I can't. You never get penalized for what you hear. You get penalized for what you say. Yeah. Well, that's true. So you would get the you would get the penalty stroke. I would not. Um, right. If, you, if you're playing in a group with some jerk who actually called that penalty. I mean, I can't sit on a on a green and say, "Wait a minute, I thought it was supposed to go left. Did you see that break right?" Eh, penalty. Well, two strokes. I think that was just an observation. If I was a rules official, I wouldn't say I thought it was going to go left. Did you see it break right? I think those are just general comments. If you said, "Wow, I think that ball's really going to break to the right," that's actually advice. Yeah. Right? Because you, you're saying that to someone, I think that's going to break to the right. It's not just an outside comment. You're saying it for the purpose of somebody. But when you say, man, I'm stupid. I thought that thing was going to break to the left. Did you see it break to the right? Now, that is a comment, a general observation that I don't think that a lot of golf prof- or rules instructors would or rules officials would say that that in and of itself is a penalty because it in fact did yeah, break true. right and it was about your shot after the fact that you hit it. Unless, of course, I say, I thought it was going to go to the left. Is it going to go right? And you answer that. And then I answered in that yeah. way. Now, that is something that would be a penalty on me yeah. because I was answering your question, thus giving you advice. If you hit a Beautiful tee shot on a par three. Put Thank it, you very much. Put it a couple inches from the hole. And I look at you and say, man, what club you hit? Now, do I, I get I a penalty for asking or do you get the penalty if you answer? I would get a penalty if I answered. Okay. Right? All right. So think of it this way. If I said something like, well, I, I hit the one that got me there. That's not the that's not advice answer. No, it's not. It's it's a that's wise. A shut it's up, a wise, John. I'm not going to tell you. It's a wise guy answer. It's gonna yes. Be lucky to get an eight iron up your butt if you answer right. like right. So here's the thing. Just go look in the guy's bag and see what clubs in his hand. Yeah, right? you can do that. However, unless he's got a towel over them, you right. can't. You cannot move the towel to look. That's, that's right. That's a, a rule infraction. Also. So here's here, this is kind of funny. This goes along with this rule that I knew this guy one time that always played with another guy who was always asking him what clubs he hit. So he got a set of iron covers <laughs> and they all had the numbers on them uh-huh. and he shifted them all by one club <laughs> up, right? So he put his sand wedge on his gap, his gap wedge on his pitch, he pitching wedge on his nine, his nine on his eight, <laughs> eight on the seven, and all that stuff. So the guy was always looking at his bag to see what he got. And he, he always gave him bum information, and he was laughing the whole way around. <laughs> and, which leads me to another thing that ticks me off. Is, yes, is those iron head covers. One is they're they're kind of awkward to get on and off, and it's not like you're fast enough as it is now. But but come on, man, you're gonna sit there, you're gonna take the shot, then you're gonna clean the club. And then you're going to take the head cover and you're going to put it back on. And then you're going to put it back in the thing and then walk off. Come on, I'm behind you. Man. Move. Let's move along. <laughs> I've got advice for people about that. Okay. Okay. And this is the same piece of advice for the guy who goes and stands at the back of the cart for an hour cleaning his clubs and putting it back in his bag while the driver of the cart or the other guy is waiting for the guy to get in the cart so he can go to his ball and hit a shot. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's where we are. Hit your shot, carry your clubs, and sit out in the golf cart and let it move to the next shot. So while the other guy is hitting his next shot, that's when you're cleaning your clubs and putting it back in your bag. Because you got to go back to the bag anyway to get your next club. Yeah, exactly. You've just saved a trip uh, and a lot of time. That's it. So from a pace of play standpoint, get your butt in the cart, hold your clubs in your hand, and put them in the bag when you got to get the next ones out on your next shot. And it saves lots of time. It does. Now, one rules question, Mr. Rules Official. Okay. Jeez, I just got done railing about the USGA, about what I don't like about the rules, and now you're asking me to clean one, uh, 
I'm, clarify one for you? I'm going to give you a scenario. You're like tearing my brain in half here. I'm on the green. There's an acorn that fell off of an oak tree and for one reason or another has partially embedded in the grass. Yeah. Okay. Uh, not solidly, just partially. So I can move a loose impediment in my line, correct? Well, let's define so, loose impediment first. Well, it, it is. I mean, it's a is loose it impediment. Fixed no, it's or not, growing. It's not growing. I mean, it goes to the acorn top, you know, that little little okay. cap on top of the acorn. I pick it up is and it I fixed? throw it out the way. No. Attached. No. Well, then move it. I move it. However, there there's a depression where it was because it's been there for so long. Okay? And guess what? You can fix that stuff now. No, I can't. I can't fix the depression. This new rule of the, you're able to fix pitch marks and footprints and things like that. Yep. Are you saying that you read it as you're not allowed to fix that indention, that somebody stepped on that acorn to embed it? Uh, and you can remove the acorn but not fill the hole? Yeah. Or not f flatten the hole? Yeah, can't flatten the hole. Is that how it reads? That's That's what it sounded like to me, man. I want to see that rule. Which what one is it? Sixteen dash one A. Sixteen one A. Let's see what we got. You're on the abnormal course conditions thing. Mm -hmm. Putting green. All right. There's no free relief to abnormal conditions. Hmm. If your ball's in the penalty area. Okay. So let's see. Well, we need to go onto that one a little bit more in depth because I want to see that. Okay. Because I have a hard time believing that they would do that. Because if if that's in fact true, the way you're saying it. I need to read that. Okay. If that's in fact true in what you're saying, that's another one of those things that I'll rip on the USGA about. Oh, yeah. that's, that's I, I set you up. I thought you would. But we'll read it during the break. And when we come right back, tell me if I'm right or wrong. And if I'm wrong, break it to me gently. We are those weekend golf guys. Know. We'll get back in a second. Gently. I want to talk to you about my wife. She is a critical care nurse, works four 12-hour shifts a week at the hospital. Her knees hurt. And she's tried the Icy Hots and the Bengays of the world only to say, yeah, I got 20 minutes of relief. That pain is right back again. So I got this bottle of stuff in the mail. This is Omax Health. It's called CryoFreeze CBD. They developed it at Omax Health. It's a non-prescription, triple-action pain relief roll-on, specially formulated to block pain receptors, reduce inflammation, and improve muscle and joint flexibility. All right, so she rolled it on and went to work. Came back in the morning, and you know what she said to me? It works! Olmax Health is offering our listeners 20% off a full bottle of Crypto Freeze Pain Relief Roll-On, plus free shipping. Now, the discount also applies to anything, any product, site-wide on their website. Just go to OmaxHealth.com today. Enter the code WEEKEND and take advantage of this incredible savings. That is O-M-A-X Health. Dot com and enter the code WEEKEND. You'll get 20% off cryo freeze and anything else site-wide. OmaxHealth.com. Sure sign of spring for me is when I hear him say that uh, pitchers and catchers are reporting for spring training. I love spring training. Have you ever thought about going out to Arizona, catch the Cactus League spring training? There's 10 stadiums, 15 Major League Baseball teams, and 75 degree average temperatures that time of year. Uh, 10 stadiums are, are all in the greater Phoenix area, all within 50 miles. And baseball is a lot of fun. Spring training is a lot of fun. But you know what else is a lot of fun is Arizona. Arizona, known for incredible landscapes, outdoor adventures, and, hey, bring your golf clubs. Because when the guys aren't playing baseball, you can be playing golf. There's so much great golf in Arizona around the greater Phoenix area. So check it out. Spring training in Arizona. What a great idea. You can plan your spring training getaway at visitarizona.com slash spring training. That's visitarizona.com slash spring training. That's visitarizona.com slash spring training. You know, golfers, we love gear. It's a big part of our game, and we put a lot of time and, and let's face it, a lot of money into getting it right, whether we're researching our next irons or maybe even testing out some new tees. But there is one important piece of equipment that we overlook, your golf cart battery. Most of us don't consider the quality of our battery. That That is until it dies, and we're stranded out in the middle of the course. That's why we want you to know about the Relyon Insight battery, the intelligent golf cart battery that utilizes intuitive software for better performance and fewer disconnects. The Relyon Insight battery is powered by lithium, not lead acid, so it charges faster, provides more range, and requires no maintenance. 
It's a drop-in replacement, so just connect and go. You can learn more at RelyOnBattery.com slash GolfGuys and use our special promo code GolfGuys for 10% off. Plus, you'll get a free charger when you order two or more Insight batteries. Again, that's RelyOnBattery.com slash GolfGuys and use promo code GolfGuys. And no other lithium battery compares to Relyon's. Order yours today. If you do a lot of work online... Especially if you do it from a public place like a coffee shop, a Starbucks or something, you really need a VPN, a virtual private network. ExpressVPN is the fastest virtual private network I've tried, and I've tried a bunch of them. And I know how you can get it for less than 7 bucks a month, and that comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. But there's an extra special spiff. Using ExpressVPN, you can spoof your location so you can buy the International Game Pass for just 125 bucks and stream all of the NFL games left in the season. All of them. Protect your online activity today and find out how you can get three months free at expressvpn.com slash weekend. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V as in virtual, P as in private, N as in network.com. E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash weekend for three months free with a one-year package. Visit expressvpn.com slash weekend to learn more. Of course, we have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash golf guys. We would love it if you were to go there and like us. We'd love it even more if you'd go there and follow us, facebook.com slash golf guys. We are back, those weekend golf guys, with good news that don't have to take a penalty to fix that indention in the green caused by that acorn. You don't like taking penalties. You just move it anyway. Well, that's true. (laughs) You find a rule and go, there's a penalty involved in there somewhere? (laughs) Hell, I'm moving my ball. (laughs) I don't need no stinking rules. In the way that you've just described it, Mm -hmm. you've got an abnormal course condition on the putting green, and your ball's on the putting green, Mm -hmm. and it interferes with your line of play. Mm -hmm. And that is clearly in Rule 16.1 when relief is allowed. Okay. Interference exists when any one of these is true, and one of the things is only when your ball is on the putting green, which you said it was, Mm -hmm. and an abnormal course condition, which you just described, on or off the putting green, interviews with your line of play, which you just described. So, sir, on the green, get relief. It is yeah. now legal to uh, to walk between your ball and the hole with your towel to uh, sweep away the uh, pine needles and the leaves and things. It used yeah, to be a penalty right. to do that, didn't it? It did used to be a penalty to do that, right? Okay. And because they just viewed it as you were altering your line of putt, but they let you do it anyway. You could have gone there and done it with your fingers and picked it all up and done the pixie sticks routine and pick it up, throw it away, pick it up, throw it away. And now they're just making it easy because people realize they're really not any different. And another thing too, if, if your ball is in the way of somebody behind you who is putting and they ask you to move your ball marker and you do, do you realize that if you forget to put it back, it's a penalty stroke? Yeah, because then you're going to putt from the wrong place. Oh yeah. An inch off. Now that you've mentioned that, so now you've put me in a position where I'm no longer railing against the USGA, which I kind of like that position, by the way. It's fun. (laughs) Um, Anyway, I can't believe that I just defended the play the ball as it lies thing like a half hour after I just railed against how they did it. I you know, know they it, didn't well, make it you just, do it then. Just depends. You if did it, that to me on purpose. Just depends if it if it helps you or hinders you. That's it's all about you, and we've discussed that already. But I guess the well, bottom, that's how you think. The bottom line is, if you're out on the course and anyone in your group has a copy of the rule book, kick them out. <laughs> just say nope. Just kick them out. We ain't playing with you. You're on your own, buddy. All right. So <laughs> check us out. <laughs> Thoseweekendgolfguys.com. Wait a minute. What if they haven't? What if it doesn't have any creases in it yet? <laughs> well, that's okay. Keep it in the bag, buddy. <laughs> Facebook.com slash golf guys. Uh, on Twitter, at WKND Golf Guys. So take the rule book, throw it away. You kind of know the rules. That's close enough for us. Go play some golf. It's hard to really contemplate the fact that baseball season starts in about six weeks. At least spring training does. And if you are a baseball fan, then one of the things on a bucket list of every baseball fan is to go to spring training. And the Cactus League spring training in Arizona is fantastic. There are 15 uh, major league teams there, 10 stadiums. Average temperature is 75 degrees. And all of the 10 stadiums are within 50 miles of the greater Phoenix area. Uh, and, and this is cool, too, because when you get there, it's much more laid back, much more low-key. You can meet the players. You can get autographs before the games. And then, of course... 
make sure you bring your sticks because most baseball fans are also great golfers and you know how fantastic the golf can be in the greater Phoenix area. It's, it's just incredible. Even as incredible as the landscapes, the outdoor adventures, the urban centers, the ghost towns, the artsy communities, uh, it's just great. Check it out. Arizona is a perfect home base for baseball fans. I want to talk to you about my wife. She is a critical care nurse, works four 12-hour shifts a week at the hospital. Her niece heard. And she's tried the icy hots and the Bengays of the world only to say, yeah, I got 20 minutes of relief. That pain is right back again. So I got this bottle of stuff in the mail. This is Omax Health. It's called CryoFreeze CBD. They developed it at Omax Health. It's a non-prescription triple action pain relief roll-on, specially formulated to block pain receptors, reduce inflammation, and improve muscle and joint flexibility. All right, so she rolled it on and went to work. Came back in the morning, and you know what she said to me? It works! Omax Health is offering our listeners 20% off a full bottle of Crypto Freeze Pain Relief Roll-On, plus free shipping. Now, the discount also applies to anything, any product, site-wide on their website. Just go to omaxhealth.com today. Enter the code WEEKEND and take advantage of this incredible savings. That is O-M-A-X Health. Dot com and enter the code WEEKEND. You'll get 20% off cryo freeze and anything else site-wide. OldMaxHealth.com. You know, golfers, we love gear. It's a big part of our game, and we put a lot of time and, and let's face it, a lot of money into getting it right, whether we're researching our next irons or maybe even testing out some new tees. But there is one important piece of equipment that we overlook, your golf cart battery. Most of us don't consider the quality of our battery. That That is until it dies, and we're stranded out in the middle of the course. That's why we want you to know about the Relyon Insight battery, the intelligent golf cart battery that utilizes intuitive software for better performance and fewer disconnects. The Relyon Insight battery is powered by lithium, not lead acid, so it charges faster, provides more range, and requires no maintenance. It's a drop-in replacement, so just connect and go. You can learn more at RelyonBattery.com slash GolfGuys and use our special promo code GolfGuys for 10% off. Plus, you'll get a free charger when you order two or more Insight batteries. Again, that's RelyonBattery.com slash GolfGuys and use promo code GolfGuys. And no other lithium battery compares to Relyon's. Order yours today. If you do a lot of work online... Especially if you do it from a, a public place like a coffee shop, a Starbucks or something, you really need a VPN, a virtual private network. ExpressVPN is the fastest virtual private network I've tried, and I've tried a bunch of them. And I know how you can get it for less than 7 bucks a month, and that comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. But there's an extra special spiff. Using ExpressVPN, you can spoof your location so you can buy the International Game Pass for just 125 bucks and stream all of the NFL games games left in the season all of them protect your online activity today and find out how you can get three months free at expressvpn.com slash weekend that's e-x-p-r-e-s-s v as in virtual p as in private n as in network.com e-x-p-r-e-s-s vpn.com slash weekend for three months free with a one-year package visit expressvpn.com slash weekend to learn more 